Brock the Hawa, Brock the Oshai, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Oshai, Koholo Yahawa, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rukal Kadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and who has taught us this truth. Shalom wa barakim, lahabakarim. Peace and blessings to the elect. Okay, all right, Shal Yashar Allah, which means of Israel, because the Heavenly Father, okay, is only dealing with Israel which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indian descendants, okay? And the Heavenly Father is only dealing with a small remnant, okay? Which is a very small number. The scriptures say the Heavenly Father's sanctuary is small, okay? The scriptures also say the Lord has created this world for many, but the world to come for few. Who are that few? That's the elect, all right? The, the ones that were chosen from the foundation of earth, all right? To believe in this truth, to receive this knowledge. And because of that, they're healed, all right, and Lord's willing, we're part of that, okay? Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world calls God, okay? His true name is Yahweh, which means He is, and Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, okay, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, that is not His name. All right, if you call on Jesus, you will not be saved. You have to call on Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai means He is the Savior, all right, because the Heavenly Father, all right, as um, created Yahweh Shai, all right, to be the savior of his people, that, which are the Israelites, which Yahweh Shai comes from the tribe of Judah. Okay? Now, I was meditating on 1 Samuel, the second chapter, uh, these scriptures that we learned when we first come in. I'm just going to read through it, get a couple precepts, and Lord willing, it be edifying. All right, to the sincere. So this is 1 Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Okay? And this one um, verse right here, the first half of it, is something that the world uh, can't even uh, receive, man. All right? The world, um, when someone dies, they don't say that the Heavenly Father was responsible for it. All right? They'll say that, oh, the devil did it, you know? But the Heavenly Father, in order for someone to, to, to pass on, the Heavenly Father has to uh, sanction it. All right? Nothing happens in this world without the Heavenly Father's uh, control. Everything's in the control of the Lord, man. Let's get this um, in Isaiah 45, um, verse 7. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, all caps. So that's Yahweh. All right. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai do all these things. The Lord does all these things. He's responsible for everything that, that takes place in this existence. Okay, in this life, in this world, if anything good happens, Heavenly Father is responsible for it. If anything bad happens, the Heavenly Father is responsible for it, right? All right. Now let's go ahead and get, I uh, believe it's... Um, Isaiah 43 and 13. Yea, before the day was, I am He. All right, and this is talking about the Heavenly Father, okay? The Heavenly Father, his name is Yahweh. Yahweh means he is. Before the day was, I am he. So the Lord actually came before a uh, time, man. Okay? Our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, our the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, his name, another title for him is Ancient of Days. All right? It says, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? All right, this is the Lord's work. This is the Lord's program that we're witnessing right now. All right, and everything is happening perfectly according to his plan. Okay, even the, the fact that we are at a low state, and that's what First Samuel, the second chapter, goes into. Okay, and, and the good news, okay, which is what the gospel means gospel means good news. Um, we, as the Lord's people, are not going to be at this low state forever. All right, and matter of fact, the Lord is actually about to. Transition us from this lowest state to a highest state very soon. Okay? First Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. Okay, let me get this scripture real quick in Sirach. This is Sirach 11 and 21. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord. And this is one of the... This is, the basic, before I finish this verse, let me get Proverbs 3. All right, because this is what 
the, these milk scriptures, these foundational precepts are what's going to sustain us and get us through these hard times, these challenging and difficult times. All right, Proverbs 3 and 5 it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. This is what we have to do. Const constantly put our trust in the Lord. All right, the scriptures say what we walk by faith, not by sight. Even if the things in front of us don't make sense, uh, even if the situation that we face, it seems like there's no way out, we have to still have confidence in our Lord. All right, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. We can't lean according to the reasons of our own mind. Our mind is limited. Man. Also, our mind is wicked and deceitful, like it says um, in the scriptures, man. We can't trust that. We have to trust the spirit. We have to trust the words of the Lord, man. All right. It says, verse six, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Constantly acknowledge the Lord in your walk. And he's going to open gates. He's going to open doors. He's going to guide you to the right place, man. All right. It says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And the fear of the Lord all right, is the beginning of wisdom, man. You have to constantly have that healthy dose of fear within your heart. Like am, if the way I'm living, is it pleasing to the Lord? Am I seeking the Lord? Am I doing enough for the Lord? You have to constantly have those things and you got to be honest with yourself. All right. No, I'm not. But what? I'm going to get back up. All right. The scripture say what? A just man falls seven times, but get back up. But the wicked fall into mischief. We can't fall down and just lay down and, and roll over and, and, and give up the fight. No, the Lord likes a fighter, man. All right. The Lord said what? Fight on. Strive unto the truth for it, which also means fight unto the death. All right. And the Lord shall fight for thee, man. All right, the Lord's going to give us a crown of life, man. The Lord's going to take over. All right, you just have to show that effort. Verse 8, it says, It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones, man. All right. Now, I was reading. What was I reading? No, I didn't finish. Sirach 11. Here we go. Uh, this is Sirach 11 and 21. It says, Marvel not at, thou, at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord. We're not supposed to marvel at the work of sinners because here it is in this society. Sinners, they go off, Right? They, they commit these transgressions, all right, but they're still prospering, okay? We don't have to marvel at that because the Lord said in Job that since the beginning of time that the triumph from the wicked is short, man. All right, so even though it looks like the wicked is prospering, all right, the Lord is going to cut them down soon, all right? It says, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. It says, for it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. And that's what the Lord is going to do suddenly. All right. The last is going to be first. And the first is going to be last. These, these wicked elite uh, bankers. That have power over society. That's living it up. That's in their heaven. Okay. They're going to be in shackles. They're going to be in chains. Okay. And us Israelites. That put our trust in the Lord. That have no status in the society. Live ordinary playing lives. We're going to be the rulers. And the kingdom to come. Out of one rot desire. We just have to continue to be faithful unto the Lord unto the end, man. All right, but the Lord's word is sealed. Okay, the Lord made this promise unto us, man. All right? And the Heavenly Father is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of man that he should repent. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, He raised up the poor out of the dust, and he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. All right, and the scriptures also say the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning. Romans 15 and 4. Uh, Romans 15 and 4. All right, that we shall have uh, comfort and hope. Okay, and what we're reading right here in 1 Samuel took place. Okay, all right, um, David, King David, here it is. Um, he was, he used to watch over sheep. All right, he had a low, low status. And the Heavenly Father exalted him to be the king over all of Israel. All right. The Lord has done it many times before, and he's about to do it now with his elect, man. Okay, we're not going to constantly be in this low state. We're not going to constantly be in captivity. The Lord is about to deliver us from captivity, man. All right. It says, and to make them inherit throne of glory. It says, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon him. He will keep the feet of his saints. Who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites. Okay. Ready? Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, 
those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice? The Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American descendants, our forefathers during the time of Moses, we made a, uh, a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. All right? So we are the saints that the scriptures speak of. But back in the Samuel, or Samuel 2, it says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. All right, the Lord is going to keep us, he's going to preserve us, and he's going to destroy the wicked. Verse 10, it says, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Who are the wicked? Who are the adversaries of the, of, of, of the Lord? The adversaries of the Lord are, are the, the Edomites, are the so-called white race, all right, who's going throughout the planet Earth, um, pushing wickedness, all right, promoting evil, saying things that are evil are good and things that are good are evil, man. All right, that's promoting women's liberation. All right, that's promoting democracy. That's promoting alternative lifestyles. Okay? Well, this adversary is going to be broken into pieces, thus saith the Lord, right? It says, out of heaven shall he thunder upon them, and the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And we're coming to the end of the world, and the Lord is about to judge this whole planet earth, man. And the way that he's going to judge it is going to be with fire. All right, it says, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. All right, and Yahweh Shai is the Lord's anointed. And Yahweh Shai's kingdom is going to be uh, established on the earth in these last days and these end times. All right. Um, I'm going to end it on that. Lord's word, this was edifying. Just wanted to read these, these precepts for Samuel 2, 6 through 10. Kahalah, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rukal Kadash. The barnness of the apostles and the elders of great mills on the rule well. Shalom, wa barakim, la bakari, peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.